So if you're anything like me, then back in 2013, you were probably really excited by a new phone from HTC, the original HTC One, or as it was more commonly known as, the HTC One M7. That phone paved the way for high quality and premium design Android handsets. And so given this, I wanted to just revisit the One M7 to see what made it so great. I'm Luke Pock with Android Authority, and this is the HTC One M7 in 2021. In 2012, a year before the HTC One M7 was released, HTC rebranded its flagship lines and announced three new phones, the HTC One X, the One V, and the One S. Each phone featured different specs, and as you can probably tell, this caused some issues. While the flagship product, the HTC One X, wasn't particularly bad, in fact it was pretty highly reviewed, the branding issues over the other devices were confusing to say the least. As a result, in 2013, HTC rebranded their flagship product once more, and thus, the HTC One M7 was born. Now back in 2013, the HTC One M7 was all the rage. In fact, it was one of the first Android phones that I really wanted to get my hands on just because of the design. Even today, in 2021, the phone still looks beautiful. The chamfered aluminum edges, smooth back and impressive 4.7 inch display didn't leave much to be desired. The HTC One M7 was truly one of the coolest looking Android handsets you could get at the time. In addition to this, the form factor was great and most people considered it to be perfect with maybe the only drawback being the location of the power button in the top left corner of the phone. Still, the design isn't the only thing that stood the test of time. Both the speakers and the display are still fantastic in 2021. Let's talk about the speakers a bit. So HTC at the time was known for partnering with Beats Audio for its speakers. And while the preceding handsets had some good audio, the HTC One M7 was a totally different story. The audio produced from this phone is quite simply impressive. I didn't expect it to hold up really at all, but the soundstage and stereo nature still put some modern smartphone speakers to shame. This was one of the first times HTC featured stereo front facing speakers in their phones and they called it Boom Sound. And to be honest, it doesn't disappoint. The highs and mids are very well balanced and there's a considerable amount of low end present too. The speakers also get pretty loud and the stereo nature of these speakers really shine when watching videos. The mics in this phone weren't half bad either and recording live audio was pretty solid. In fact, here's what the audio sounds recorded from this phone. Lastly, the display on this phone really was amazing for the time. In 2013, this device shipped with an impressive 1920x1080p 4.7 inch display. It had a pixel density of about 469 pixels per inch, which meant this device was very sharp, even for today's standards. Although competitors at the time, such as the Galaxy S4, featured a Super AMOLED display, the panel on the One M7 was still impressive. Today, it holds up very well. The screen is fairly bright, and even though it's a 1080p panel, I can't make out individual pixels. Honestly, I'm surprised at how well this display looks. There's no strange color shifting or artifacting, even when viewing the display at odd angles. Now, probably one of my favorite aspects of the One M7 was the software. I owned previous HTC phones that shipped with different versions of HTC Sense, but HTC Sense 5 was one of my favorites. Everything from the iconic weather flip clock, to the blink feed, to even the messages app looked great. But unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and today it's pretty hard to get the phone running the original version. So I was stuck using HTC Sense 6, and as a result, using the phone was pretty slow. Keep in mind that the HTC One M7 shipped with a Snapdragon 600 clocked in at 1.7 gigahertz with two gigabytes of RAM. Back in the day, these were no slow specs, but today they're hardly quick. Because of the compatibility issues and general sluggishness that outdated software brings, the One M7 just couldn't keep up. I tried using this phone as my main device and it was pretty difficult. Menus are slow, updates take forever, and moving in and around the OS just feels sluggish. It definitely isn't the quick and snappy phone that it used to be in 2013. Moving to a third party launcher and disabling the Verizon bloatware did help a little, but it was still painfully tedious. If apps did eventually load, using the device wasn't that bad, nor is it much different from using other modern smartphones, but it just goes to show you the importance of having optimized, up-to-date software. Now, if you remember, the HTC One M7 was HTC's first smartphone to feature its ultra pixel technology. The idea was fairly simple. 
rather than having a lot of smaller megapixels, why not have less and larger, more photosensitive ultra pixels? As a result, the HTC One M7 shipped with a four megapixel camera that had a larger sensor than most smartphone cameras at the time. In 2013, this panned out all right, but not as well as HTC had hoped. And competitors like Apple and Samsung still managed to produce better out of the box images than the One M7, likely due to their higher megapixel count. Today, the ultra pixels show their obvious shortcomings. While in theory, the larger sensor allows more light making for better low light photography, most images are still pretty noisy. Even in direct sunlight, images tend to have a fair amount of noise in the shadows. Focus is also pretty hit or miss, and I found it very difficult to get images in focus consistently. Also a big issue of the HTC One M7 was its tendency to render some flares as purple. And my particular unit had a rough time with white balance and most images have an unnatural green cast. Obviously, it's hard to expect a lot from an eight year old phone, but I was honestly surprised at how bad this phone camera is today. Even the front facing camera, while it was one of the first phones to feature an ultra wide camera, still struggles to produce sharp images. Unfortunately, the camera system on the HTC One M7 doesn't really hold up. Back in 2013, the HTC One M7 was one of my favorite Android handsets, and today, it still is. I still can't get over the beautiful aluminum design, form factor, amazing display, and outstanding speakers. Yes, the cameras and the OS experience don't hold up today, but who could expect it to? Also, on a side note, the HTC One M7 in red, in my opinion, was one of the best looking Android phones of that era, with maybe the HTC One M8 coming in a close second. If you guys wanna see a similar video on that device, let me know. I'm saddened that HTC hasn't really produced any devices since 2018, because the HTC One M7 truly was, in my opinion, one of the best Android phones ever made, and I'd love to see HTC re-enter the market once again. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Let me know down below what you remember about the HTC One M7. Also, do you guys wanna see more of these revisited style videos? Just let me know. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up. I'm Luke Pock with Android Authority, and I'll catch you in the next video. Pratic asks, what's happening with the Pixel 5a? Is it still going to launch this year? Um, That's kind of a tough question. I'm not entirely sure. We have seen leaks of the Pixel 6, but it's been kind of radio silence from Google regarding the Pixel 5a. Um, I'm assuming that they would probably release it sometime considering the success of the Pixel 4a, but we really don't know. So we'll just have to wait right now. Varun Banka asks, are custom ROMs safe? That's a bit of a difficult question to answer. Yes, there are trustworthy developers who make trusted ROMs and you can find those ROMs on sites like XDA developers and make sure that people vouch for them. Um, there are definitely untrustworthy custom ROMs, so it really just depends on which one you're using and you wanna make sure you do your due diligence and your research before getting into one. Rahul says, lovely content like always. You guys deserve a lot more subscribers. Thank you for the upload, stay safe and take care guys. Well, we appreciate it and we hope all of you guys are also staying safe. Thank you for watching our videos and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.